You know, there was a time in Canada where athletes were under immense pressure to win championships at the Olympics. And here's why we would rarely win titles. Uh, especially winter, summer. We host the Olympics in 76, didn't win a gold medal, summer summer games, Montreal. Host Olympics in 88, Calgary, didn't win a gold medal. Uh, it would be occasional breakthroughs of a goal like an equestrian or certain skiing events or stuff like this. But this lady was a massive gold medal threat at the Mexico City Olympics. And if she would have won one gold medal, she would have made millions and millions of dollars. But unfortunately, by not winning, she became uh, a media-created outcast and eventually impacted her mental health. And she was basically a victim of her own success at the wrong time, not at the Olympics. So today we're going to be talking about Mighty Mouse, Elaine Tanner. Now, Elaine Tanner, now known as Elaine Tanner Watt, member of the Order of Canada, uh, he, he's, she's a multi-time champion in swimming, a multi-time Olympic medalist, and a former world record holder in two events. Now, she was nicknamed Mighty Mouse partly because of her small stature, because she was barely five feet tall. Uh, she grew a little bit taller as she got older, and partly due to her competitive drive. Tanner had a large impact on Canadian swimming and is considered one of the top performers of all time in his sport. Penny, uh, Alex, uh, Penny Alexiak, our current champion, uh, Marion Limpert, of course, from New Brunswick, many great Canadian swimmers, but she was a standard bear back uh, in, in the 60s. Now, she first came to major prominence during the 66 Commonwealth Games in Kingston, Jamaica, where she won four gold medals and three silvers, becoming the first woman to ever win four golds at a Commonwealth Games and the first person to get seven medals in uh, those championships. She eventually won the Lumars Trophy, recognizing her as the Canada's best athlete in 1966. She became the youngest person to ever receive the award and was also selected as the country's top athlete overall. The following year at the Pan Am Games in Winnipeg, 1967, she won two gold and three silvers, breaking two world records in the process. Now, when she arrived at the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City, she was a heavy gold medal favorite. However, due to factors beyond her control, she, she basically wasn't a, her, herself. She won three Olympic medals, two individual silvers, and one relay bronze. But let's put this in perspective. There's been whole Olympics where Canada's only won one medal in sometimes two or three. She won three medals by herself. Was she praised for that? No. The media got on her back saying she should have won, blah, 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 all that. Now, the most of the uh, central media, like Ontario, deemed the lack of gold a disappointment and led Tanner to suffer from dep depression. She eventually retired from competition after the 68 Olympics at the uh, young age of 18 uh, years of age. Now, Despite being of Canadian nationality, she also won the ASA National British title over 110 yards butterfly in 1965. Now, in 69, she was made an officer of the Order of Canada as an inducted in the Canada's Sports Hall of Fame in 1971. Now, as a result of this great success, the Elaine Tanner Award has been presented to Canada's top junior female athlete since 1972. Now, uh, in Canada, 22, 21, and under still considered junior, and this could go to any athlete from any sport. However, following the gains, Tanner has fell in a depression that self-proclaimed lasted decades. She developed a serious eating disorder, suffered anxiety attacks, and had her first marriage end after nine years in 1980 with two children that wound up going to the custody of their father in Prince George, B.C., as Tanner remained in Vancouver. Now. Roaming around Canada, doing odd jobs, and eventually having a failed second marriage. Then in 87, by 1988, she was living out of her car, she was jobless, and feeling suicidal, but eventually found her footing again after meeting former lifeguard John Watt. They, uh, 
uh, cemented her bond by getting married five years later, and they uh, live together in the beautiful BC community of White Rock. They also have a charitable organization called Team Underdog. Now, Tanner in retirement has uh, done a lot. Uh, she's been very active in sport, very active in the literary, literary field, as her first children's book, Monkey Guy and the Cosmic Fairy, came out in 2015. And of course, her quest beyond the gold autobiography is highly anticipated. Uh, release to the Canadian and international market. Now, I saw Lee and Tanner uh, swim in the highlights from 68, and, you know, how it works with the non-freestyle events, ladies and gentlemen, you're only good as your last 50. So, what what happened with this, even though she was a world record holder, the speedier pools that the Americans were uh, having access to in international swimmers. When it comes down to swimming, ladies and gentlemen, this is before the GDR went on to drugs. You had Australia, you had the States, you had Canada, you had the Eastern European countries, you had Russia at times, and now, of course, you got Hungary and some of the, uh, you know, the lower countries. Uh, uh, South Africa and stuff like that. If you're looking at the 2021 Olympics, great swimmers come from a myriad of ca countries, but for her to win, the people to think she was going to win two gold medals at the Olympics, where again, no Canadian had won a gold medal in swimming for decades, it was kind of a high order. I think what happened now in the process is Canadians, when our Canadian Olympians medal, we don't really criticize it, we say it's a good thing because what happened with Lane Tanner and Ken Reed and uh, all these battle, uh, battle hopes that never reach it, they were, they, were like, they were media attack like crazy. If you watched the CBC, Sportsnet, TSN coverage in Canada of the Olympics, you're going to see, not say it's a soft approach, but you know, we celebrate, for example, if you don't win a medal, if you break any records in the pool, we state that. It's personal best and stuff like that. Because we've gone through great success. We've gone through Donovan Bailey and Mark McCoy, and we've gone through the Roars, of course, that won so many medals. And the Winter Olympics, we dominate. We have a trouble, with, for some reason, we put too much pressure on our athletes at the Summer Games. I mean... Uh, you look at uh, Lennox Lewis losing in 84, he almost quit the sport because of the bad media coverage. O'Sullivan and uh, Willie DeWitt not winning in uh, uh, the LA Olympics and people took that to heart. I know I did. So I think what happened with Lane Tanner, the, the, the cautionary tale, as Canadians we've changed the way we treat our Olympians and it's, 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 it's getting there. Like look at a trapper leader this week, she won two straight uh, titles. She wasn't uh, what they call uh, fully ready to go. She was injured. She got fourth place. And you know, that just is important. Hey, top five, top ten in the world. That's just amazing. Or like that uh, uh, you know, that Quebec weightlifter who got fourth in the bigger category in the last couple of days. That was just tremendous to watch. You know, top five in the world. That's just bloody tremendous. Of you know, nine billion people. That's pretty good. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our uh, Olympic uh, stories and our uh, look, uh, Canadian look at the uh, the Olympics from a sometimes serious or comedic perspectives, let us know what you like. Give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And I tell you something, Money Mouse, what a great athlete. I was so proud that she represented Canada so well on the international stage. So what? She doesn't have a gold medal. She's a lead Tanner. Shut up. <laughs> have a good day. Bye.